All right. Um, this is now our second sample problem for the topic on pneumatic conveyors. Now, the problem states that we are to design a one ton per hour dilute phase pneumatic conveying systems in vacuum pressure. It says that a 75 mm diameter uh, stainless steel pipe is to be used for transporting the flour. Okay, so this is our our material flour. Pressure from, um, okay, so that's period, and then pressure from uh, the, uh, no, this is not fun, this is pressure drop, okay, pressure drop of the miscellaneous, um, miscellaneous equipment is 1.5 um, kPa, so it's just an assumption, okay, so um, recall that vacuum pressure systems have have larger pipe sizes and as well as additional equipments right so that's why I included this this value okay so just to take into account the pressure drops in case that there are other other equipments uh, attached to these systems okay so this is our our uh, layout so this is drawn in 3d so X Y and Z we have a 10 meters uh, 10 meter long pipe along the X and then along the Y we have 6 meters and along the Z axis we have 8 and then this one al uh, along the X again we have 5 meters okay, so this is uh, actually it should be since we have a um, negative pressure then that's that should be the blower should be in this side of course okay so just forgive me uh, for now okay now uh, we have this data we have a far material uh, far material and the density the solid density of the far is 560 kilograms per meter cube and then the particle uh, the diameter of the particle that's 150 microns micrometers so that's times 10 to the negative 6 then this one is the uh, density the mass density of the of the air and that's just 1.2 kilograms per meter cube then our mass flow rate is one ton per hour and if we s convert that to to kg per seconds that's going to be 0 0.278 now if you if you check the classification of the material in the Calder's uh, classification or Dixon's classification that's going to be uh, group A okay so um, now you would notice that that uh, we have this um, mass flow rate we have the uh, also the diameter of the pipe D is equal to 0 0.075 in meters but we don't have the saltation velocity now in case that we don't have data for for the saltation velocity then we can we can use the risk uh, risk correlations for saltation velocity okay, so calculate the saltation velocity using risk correlations okay so we have this u u saltation is just equal to if you rearrange this uh, equation what you get is 4 times the mass flow rate right the mass flow rate of the solids times 10 to the uh, Ten to the, I guess that's ten to the x, and g to the beta, or we can use the alpha, alpha and beta. Okay, they're just symbols anyway. So alpha, beta, and times d to the beta all over two minus two. Okay, divided by the pi times the density of the fluid raised to one over beta plus one okay so 
we need to solve for alpha and beta first. Okay, so alpha is just equal to 1440 uh, times the particle diameter, uh, 150 times 10 to the negative 6, okay, plus 1.96, uh, which is equal to 2.176, and the beta is 1100 um, times the particle diameter, times 10 to the negative 6, plus 2.5 is equal to 2.665. Okay, so um, we can now solve for this uh, velocity. Okay, so the velocity of the solids for for vacuum vacuum system is greater than that velocity of the solids required for pressurized system or for um, positive pressures. Okay, so we will use a value of instead of 1.8 let's say we'll use uh, well we'll write it here so use b sub s for negative is equal to two times the saltation velocity the velocity for the positive systems okay so two times the saltation velocity now, which is just equal to um, 20, oh, sorry, sorry, uh, this is not yet. So, for the saltation velocity, what, uh, what, what we get is a value of 10.34 meters per second. Okay, so once you have this, then th that means that's, that will be the velocity of the solids. So Vs will be is equal to 2 times the saltation velocity. So that's uh, that's going to be 20.68 meters per second. Okay, and therefore, the gas velocity would just be simply Vs over 0 0.9 is 22.98 meters per second. Okay, so, so now we have all the velocities, the solid velocities, the gas velocities. We all have that. And... Uh, we can now solve for the solid we can now solve for the solid loading ratio okay so the solid loading ratio is just equal to the mass flow rate of the solids divided by the mass flow rate of the air and if we substitute the values we have 0 0.278 divided by 1.2 times the area okay that's uh, pi d squared and this is your d this pi d squared all over 4 times the velocity of 22.98 and we have a value of 2.28 okay so um, the next step once you have the solid uh, the solid loadings the diameter then we can solve for uh, delta P the pressure drop due to the acceleration of solids uh, delta P a sub a so delta p sub a just equal to the mass flow of the solids times the velocity of the solids divided by area and if you substitute all the values what you get is um, 1300 points um, point seven pascals okay so for for the pressure drop, pressure drop uh, delta P uh, Fg is equal to um, FL all over D plus summation of K, K times this uh, density, the, the velocity squared divided by 2. And of course, we need to solve for the Reynolds number. And the Reynolds number, if you if you substitute the values, 
just draw the times LC. This is the um, characteristic length, and that's uh, that uh, corresponds to the diameter of the pipe. Okay, so take note: this characteristic length is equal to the diameter for circular cross sections only. Okay, so LC divided by the um, kinematic viscosity, and what what you will get is a value of 114,900. Therefore, uh, the Reynolds number is greater than 3,000, and so the flow is turbulent. Okay, so therefore, the friction factor is equal to 0 0.25 divided by the value of this, 1 over 3.7 times the roughness, um, relative roughness, plus 5.74 all over the Reynolds number times uh, to the uh, raised to 0 0.9 and you have to square this value okay so f is equal to 0 0.0191 okay so i didn't um i didn't um give you this value but uh this uh, this value of roughness but you can find that in our handouts and since what's given to us is the diameter and also the material stainless steel pipe okay. okay so you can just use the value of steel although there's no specific values for stainless steels but for design purposes we can just use the value of steel okay so 0 0.0191 and the k values then let's just assume a 90 degrees long band then that's going to be 0 0.7 except that how many numbers of Okay, so we have 1, 2, and 3. So 0 0.7 times 3 is equal to 2.1. Therefore, if you substitute the values of f and the summation of k, and also the values of this velocity, the diameter, the length, and everything, what you get is 3,005.411 uh, pascals. Okay, so uh, the next step is to solve for delta P FS, the friction, uh, I mean the pressure drop due to solid frictions, which is equal to K times the solid loading uh, ratio times the pressure drop due to uh, the gas friction. Okay, and FS is, we use the, the, Correlations by, if I remember it correctly, that's by cleansing. 55.5 times 0.075 raised to 1.1 over the values of 2.98 raised to 0.64. And this one, 150 times 10 to the negative 6 meters. Okay, times, okay, raised to 0.26 and this one, 560 kilograms per meter squared raised to 0 0.91 and the value here is 0 0.01346 so you have the fs you have the f you have the value of vs and vg then you can solve for this k which is equal to 0 0.634 okay and therefore the delta p f s is equal to 4,344.76 pascals okay the next step is solve for delta P F uh, L that's LG that's going to be raw GH which is just equal to 70.56 pascals then this delta P L S is H times M S times 9.81 the G all over area times the um, velocity, uh, velocity of the solids. Okay, so if you substitute all the values, what you get is 179. Uh, that's Pascals. Okay, therefore, total P is. 
3.7 plus 3,005.4 plus 4,344.8 and 70.6 and 179. Okay, plus the um, miscellaneous, uh, I mean, pressure drop due to um, miscellaneous components of 1,500. Okay, so therefore, so these are all in Pascals, and therefore delta P total is equal to 10,400.5 Pascals or 10.4 kilopascals. So now we have the pressure drop, the total pressure drop. Now let's solve for the flow rate, Q is equal to AV, and our area, that's 0 0.0442 times 22.98 and of course this is VG meters per second uh, I mean meters per second and that's gonna be 0 0.102 uh, meter cube per second okay so we can also solve for the air horsepower and then the required motor motor horsepower if you'd like but the point here uh, once you have once you have all the data right for example uh, once you have the 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 diameter the solid loading ratio and then the particle diameter then you can then you can now solve for the pressure drops so once you have the pressure drops uh, and you can obtain the the flow rates then you can select your fans Okay, so um, just a practical question. If we solve it, that uh, I mean, if we obtain the value of 10.4 kilopascals for the static pressure and the flow rate of 0 0.102 meters cube per second, is it uh, is it gonna be the the actual conditions? So of course, in practice, probably not. So it's it's gonna be a range. And you have to you have to be ready on how to tweak the the system a little bit or apply the engineering judgment uh, about the selection of the fans or maybe you would, you would like to increase the pressure or increase the specs or whatever. And of course, there's going to be advantages and um, and disadvantages. Okay, so again, that's going to be a range, and it's going to be um, uh, it's going to be decision making for the designers. Okay, so um, I also uh, I remember I uh, I also mentioned about the fan loss. So the fan loss they're just basically uh, loss that. Um, about if I vary the Q, what will happen? Uh, I mean, if if I vary the let's say the diameter or uh, let's say speed, because we have a fixed diameter. I mean, I guess um, we can have, uh, or it's, it's much um, easier to change the speed by just changing the uh, let's say the um, the the combination of the pulleys or the sprockets or whatever. Okay, or if we have a variable frequency drive uh, or for the motor controls, then that would be much easier as compared to, to just, to, I mean, to changing the diameter. Okay, so if I change the speed, then what will happen, what will happen to the flow rate or, or what will happen to the, to the pressure and what will happen to the horsepower? Okay, so we have... Uh, we have equations for this for this fan loss and this is beyond the scope of our course probably you will encounter uh, you'll encounter this in your subject process engineering okay so um, process engineering and also I, I teach this in the subject indoor environmental controls And that's for ventilations uh, of uh, of buildings of agricultural buildings okay so I, I tackled this 
this concept, this fanless concept in this indoor environmental controls for AB buildings. Okay, so um, let's now have a, uh, a summary for the sample, uh, for this sample problem. So what we did is we solved for the saltation velocities because we didn't have that. So we used the risk correlations um, and then we solve for this velocity uh, of the solids and then the velocity of the gas. But once you have all that, then you can solve for the solid loadings. And then you can move on to solving the pressure drops. Okay, so once you have all the pressure drops, then you, you sum them up, okay, right? You, you sum them up and then you solve for Q. So once you have delta P and Q, then you can select your your fans, your fan weightings or fan capacities or whatever. Right, so I guess that's all in this topic on pneumatic conveyors. And we'll, in the next video, we will be discussing uh, size reduction equipments. So um, stay tuned.